Hi everybody and welcome back to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we are working on a 2011 Volkswagen Polo, a beautiful blue Volkswagen Polo, and this came from another workshop. And the customer complained, so that workshop's complaint is that there is no communication with the ABS unit. Now, apparently they tried lots of things, but still no communication with that ABS unit. So let's see in this episode if we can diagnose this together. Now this is how I got the car. I think installed in the car right now is the original ABS unit. If you look closely, you can see a sticker over there and that's a warranty sticker. The previous workshop thought the ABS unit was faulty, so they removed it from the car and sent it out to be tested at AC Tronics. AC Tronics put it on a test bench, they tested it. Obviously they had communication and they tested it further, but their conclusion was there was nothing wrong with this ABS unit. Now I think the previous workshop doubted that conclusion, so inside the car there is another used ABS unit that they hooked up <clears throat> to the connector, but still no communication. Of course, because on the test bench they had communication, so the chances of it being the ABS unit are very slim. But the question is, what is the problem? So let's see if we can figure that out. Now, as always, let's start out by confirming the customer complaint. Let's see if we can communicate with that ABS unit, because if we can, this is going to be a very short video and I can go home early. Now, I hooked up the dongles to the car. I hooked up a battery maintainer because after this, we probably need to do some testing and I don't want to worry about battery voltage. Now, I'm trying to do a complete scan of the car, but the scan is stuck on the ABS unit. It's trying to scan and scan but it looks like it can't communicate. Now in the end, the ABS grays out and that means there's no communication or the vehicle is not equipped with that module. So I guess that's customer complaint confirmed. Now when we don't have communication with a module, we always need to do the same checks. First of all, check the communication wires. Is it possible for the module to communicate on those wires? Is the communication making it all the way to that module? If that's correct, the next thing we need to do is check powers and grounds. Now, let's take a look at a wiring diagram. And in this wiring diagram, we can see that there are two communication wires, an orange black one and an orange brown one. Then we have two ground wires, these two brown ones over here. And then we have some power feeds that come from these fuses. But let's start out by checking those communication wires. Now, what I quickly did is I removed the cover from the connector so we could back probe those two communication wires. Now, as we have seen in the wiring diagram, the communication wires are an orange black and an orange brown wire. These two, I back probed those and I hooked up my oscilloscope. Now, as you can see, there's nothing wrong with the communication at that connector. And that means in this case, the CAN bus is not causing our issues. Since we ruled out the CAN bus being our issue, of course, the logical next step we need to take is to check the powers and grounds going to that ABS module. Now in the next step, let's check both ground wires going to the ABS module. I disconnected the connector from the module and I back probed both brown wires, which are the ground wires, as we've seen in the wiring diagram. Now I hooked up my test light to battery positive, so when I touch the ground, the test light should light up, and it does. So let's check the first wire. And as you can see, the test light lights up. And let's check the other ground. And again, our test light lights up. So there's nothing wrong with the ground wires going to that ABS module. Now let's do the same thing for the power feeds. So this time I connected my test light to battery negative. So when I touch a power supply, our test light lights up. Now there are multiple power supplies for this module, but let's start out with these two fat ones, a red and green wire and a green and red wire. So let's take the test light and let's check the first one. As you can see, our test light does not light up. And let's check the other one. 
And again, the test light does not light up. So it looks like we don't have a power supply or at least on these two big wires at the ABS module. I took another look at that wiring diagram and remember how those power feeds came from fuses. Now it turns out that those fuses are very conveniently placed right here, right next to the battery. When we take a look underneath that fuse holder, we can even see that red and green and green and red wire going right there to those fuses. Now my test light is still connected to battery negative. So when I touch a power feed, my test light is going to light up. Now, let me dim the light real quick so we can see a little bit better. And let's check the power at those fuses. As you can see, the test light does not light up over here. Neither does it over here, not over here or nor over here. It turns out that this entire fuse holder is not getting any power. Now, I was poking around a little bit and it even gets a little bit weirder because when I touch that strip right over here, my test light lights up, but when I touch it over here, it does not light up. So it does light up over here, but it doesn't over here. You've probably noticed in my videos that I always use a test light to check for powers and grounds. And that's because a test light loads the circuits where a multimeter does not. If I were to use a multimeter to diagnose this problem, it might get me into trouble. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. When I test for power at this point, you can see my test light does not light up. But if I were to use my multimeter, and it's connected to ground right here. And when I check this point again, we see 13, hold on. We see 13.5 volts. Now remember, there's still a battery charger connected to this battery. Now, if I see this reading, I might think everything is just fine. Now let's see what happens when we take this test light and load that circuit and you suddenly see that voltage drop. Now that means the circuit is not able to sustain that voltage if a load is applied. Now this all means there must be a high resistance somewhere in this area that prevents enough current to flow to light up our test light or even turn on the ABS module. Now let me demonstrate one more time. Our test light lights up over here, it lights up over there, doesn't light up over here, Neither does it light up at the fuses. Now let's check again using a multimeter. Voltage at this point, voltage at this point, voltage at this point, although it's a little bit lower and that means there's a voltage drop, that's a sign something is wrong. But even voltage at the fuses. Now let me take the test light and load the circuit again. So current actually needs to flow to light up our test light and you can see that our voltage drops. Now let me also quickly demonstrate that the voltage shouldn't drop when you have a good power supply. So let's take a measurement at this point, which is a known good power supply. And when I touch it with a test light, you can see the test light lights up, but the voltage stays where it was. And this is what it's supposed to look like when you have a good power supply. Now let's check this side one more time. And you can see the voltage drops. Now, before we continue diagnosing our ABS problem on this Polo, there's another job I need to do. I need to program an extra key on a Nissan. Now, everybody that's programmed keys before knows that original keys can be very expensive and it sometimes requires a trip to the dealership to get them programmed. Now, I recently got this KM100 key tool from Auto, which works with universal keys. Now, not only are these universal keys a lot cheaper, but some of them also look way cooler than the original keys. Now I've never used it before, so I thought it was a great opportunity to test it and see if it's any good in this video. Behind me, we've got a Nissan Qashqai, as it's called here in Europe, and I think, but I'm not sure, it's called a Nissan Rogue in the States, and it might be called different names in different parts of the world. Anyway, the new owner purchased this vehicle about three weeks ago, and it only came with one smart key. Now the owner would like to have a second key, but he prefers not to pay a ton 
on an original one. So I thought it was a great opportunity to test this tool. This is the Auto KM100, and it is a tool that can program universal keys, universal smart keys, to a wide range of vehicles, including this one. Now, these keys feel high quality, they look high quality, but if there are any good, only time will tell. Now, the tool came with two free smart keys, so I decided if we can program this key to this vehicle, I will give it to the owner for free, and he can give us some feedback, and we can decide if this is something we would like to offer to our customers. Right now, this universal key is still a blank key and it's not programmed to the vehicle. So obviously when I try to open and close the doors with it, that won't work and neither will it turn on the ignition because if we try, the car will tell us we've used the wrong key ID. Now, obviously when we use the original key, we can open and close the vehicle and of course, we can now turn on the ignition. Now in order to program this smart key to this Nissan, we first need to pre-code this key. In other words, we need to prepare it to be programmed to a Nissan. Now, in order to do that, we need to place it in this space over here and we need to select the right vehicle. After that, the only thing we have to do is generate universal key. Now we successfully pre-coded the key to match this make and model, we can now program this key to this vehicle. Now in order to do that, we need to hook up the tool to the vehicle and we need to make sure we have all the keys with us when we start programming. So both the old and the new key. So I connected the tool to the car and it told me to put on the hazard lights and it very quickly read the car's pin code. Now it wants me to put the universal key up until the start button and press it once, so okay. Let's press it and now it tells me to turn off the ignition. Okay, turn it off. Program success, you wanna program another smart key? Yes, please. The original one. And let's press okay. And it wants me to turn off the ignition again. Okay. Program successful, continue to program the next one. No, we've only got two keys. Press the start stop button and then touch the first learned key. Okay, so it wants us to touch the button again. Okay, turn off the ignition and wait for three seconds. One, two, three. Okay, programming complete. Check if the remote control is operating properly. Start the engine and wait for five seconds. So let's get the universal key. And as you can see, the remote works. Now let's try and start the vehicle. And it looks like programming the smart key was a success. Now it looks like we successfully programmed this auto universal smart key to this Nissan Qashqai. And to be honest, that went very smooth. Scary almost how easy that was. Now let's see if we can open and close this vehicle using this key. And we certainly can. And let's see if we can start the car with the original key that's over there out of this vehicle. So if it starts, it starts on this smart key. Let's try it. And as you can see, no problem. It starts right up. Now, like I said before, I'm going to give this key away to the new owner of this vehicle in return for some feedback. Now, these universal auto smart keys come in lots of different models, and in most cases, they're definitely a lot cheaper than the original smart keys. So if you wanna choose your own model of key and you wanna save some money, this could definitely be a good option. Now, maybe there's a locksmith watching this video with some long-term experience on these auto smart keys. If you do, Please share your thoughts on these keys with us in the comment section. Now I suspect our problem is somewhere around this nut. Now, when I test for voltage on this side of the nut, the test light lights up, but on this side, my test light no longer lights up. 
So I suspect there is corrosion somewhere underneath these connections. Now, what I want to do is I want to touch this connection and wiggle the fuse holder and see if we can temporarily restore that connection and get the test light to light up. Of course, when it does, we still need to take it apart and thoroughly clean it to prevent it from happening again. So let's wiggle that fuse holder. And it looks like we just, no, we didn't. But let's wiggle it a little bit more. And now we can get the test light to light up. Now I thought it was just corrosion in between that connection and it might still be, but when I wiggle it, you can also see right over here, it's a little bit loose. Now that might be of me wiggling this connector and some of that corrosion breaking up and now it's got room to move around. But anyway, let's uh, take it all apart. Let's clean it up, put it back together and see if we solved our issue. I took it all apart, I cleaned it all up and put it all back together nice and tidy. Now let's do the final check with the test light and it looks like we've got power everywhere and all the fuses and even when we wiggle the fuse holder the power doesn't drop out. So it looks like we took care of that issue. Now the moment of truth, let's see if we can communicate with that ABS control module. Now I did another scan of the entire vehicle and this time the ABS module comes up red and red means we can communicate with the module but it has got fault code stored and that of course was to be expected. We had a bad power feed, it has been off the vehicle, it's been on test bands. This is all very likely to set fault codes. To be honest, I'm not really surprised. So let's clear those fault codes and let's see if anything comes back. Now just the simple fact that we can read and clear fault codes again actually means we fixed this vehicle. And as you can see, no fault codes stored. Removing the ABS unit, sending it out to a company to get tested, reinstalling it, buying another used one to see if that solved the issue. Sounds like a lot of time and money wasted on just a simple bad connection. Now, I don't know whether the previous workshop tested the powers and grounds with a multimeter or whether they tested the powers and grounds at all. Anyway, if you need to test powers and grounds, make sure you test them under load. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and when you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I upload a new video. And remember, Diagnosed then, fix it again. See you next time, guys. As always, let's start out by confirming the customer. <laughs>